Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Once more, my name is Ibrahim Ali Aliyu. I'm here to continue the course which I've started, which is BOS 103 Business Mathematics 2. In our study session 1, we are able to look at matrix algebra. Because of the bulky nature of the, of the, of the topic, we decide to split it into two. In the last, in the last um, class, which is study session one, we're able to look at matrix addition, subtraction, multiplication by scalar, and multiplication of matrix by another matrix. Eventually, we apply those principles to a typical industrial setting. You remember the previous example we did in our last class, JKL, LJKL, Abi? That's the typical exam question you should be expecting from us. But in this study session, we would like you to demonstrate the understanding of matrix algebra in this business decision making and similarly apply your knowledge and understanding in solving simultaneous equation, which is the last thing we'll be doing subsequently. And if you look at the title of this session, which is study session two, it's matrix algebra two, meaning that we are continuing from where we stopped. We we'll begin this session by looking at transpose of a matrix. Let me let you understand what I mean by transpose. It's the interchange of the rows to become column and the column to become row. Assuming this is matrix A, and we have 3, 5, 7, 9. And this is matrix B. We have 1, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 1, 9, 7. These are two matrices. If we are to look for the transpose of A, the transpose of A is simple. A transpose is written this way. We bring the row, we strengthen it to become the column, which is 3, 7. We bring the row, strengthen it to, bring, to become column. Then we pick the column and strengthen We pick the row again, strengthen it to be the column for the second one, which is 5, Nine. So you can see this is 3. This 3 this way is brought and transformed to be 3, 7. This 5 and 9 is transformed to be what? 5, 9, which is exactly what we have there. So applying the same principle here, B transpose, your guess is as good as mine. 1, 6, 1 will become the new row, which is 1, 6, 1. 3, 7, 9 will become the second column. Because it's the second row, 3, 7, 9. Then 5, 8, 7, which is the third row, will become the third column. 5, 8, 7. So this is B transpose, which is exactly what we have on the board. There, as projected, you can see A transpose, you can see B transpose. That's transpose of a matrix. Then we'll proceed by looking at determinant of a matrix. Let's assume... A determinant of a matrix is measured in terms of how the dimension of the matrix looks like. But for sake of this class, we limit ourselves to three by three determinant. Three by three determinant. We first of all look at the two by two determinant. How do we approach that? Which, if we can retain that knowledge, we'll need that knowledge also to solve for three by three determinants. Let's take the example projected. On the screen, let me reproduce it on the board so that it will make a complete sense. Matrix A is 2, 1, 4, 3. A is 2, 1, 4, 3. Finding the determinant is usually written this way mathematically. In getting the determinant, as written there on the board. Don't let me bother you with the mathematical derivation and the formula. Mm -mm. That is not what we are interested in. We are interested in the application. Let's see how we apply the formula. 3 times 2 to get the determinant is 3 times 2 minus 1 times 4. This times this minus this times this. This is just 6 minus 4, which is what? 2, which is exactly what we have for data A. If we look at B, matrix B, what we have there? We have 1, 3, minus 2, 8. 1, 3, minus 2, 8. Oh, I love the minus sign introduced. This times this will become 1 times 8 
minus 3 times minus 2. And if you notice, 1 times 8 is 8, minus times minus plus 3 times 2, 6. So what we have here is what? 14. And you can see that's exactly what we have projected to you on the screen. You can see what we projected to you on the screen is exactly what we have on the board. That's for 2 by 2 matrix. Then let's move further and see how we can look at the determinant for 3 by 3 matrix. In solving the determinant for 3 by 3 matrix, I want you guys to understand something clearly. We begin to look at a particular cell, a particular cell in the matrix, and eliminate all the elements in its rows and columns. Then we'll be having two rows and two columns left, provided it's three by three. Those are the two rows, two columns that we are going to use to perform as if we are solving for two by two. I will illustrate this in our next example. But what we have on the board, if you can pause and go through it, is how to move ahead and arrive at three by three determinant of a matrix. We'll call it third order determinant. But you know, since most of you are scared of figures, let me take it in a friendly manner in such a way that uh, it will be like uh, taking pap just with uh, alele. Let's move it to an example to illustrate what you see on the board. Don't let what you see on the screen be scary to you. I want you to observe critically and patiently in such a way that if you look at the formulae on the screen projected to you, it will be illustrated accordingly in such a way that it will be less intimidating. If you look at the example on the board, which is example 10, which is continuation from our study session 1, we have matrix Y. And matrix Y is written to be as follows. Let me reproduce it on the board to aid your proper understanding. We have matrix Y. What do we have as matrix Y? Y equals to 1, 3, 1 minus 4, minus 2, 0, 0, minus 1, 1. Now, this is a typical 3 by 3 matrix of equal dimension. What do we do, class? The first step to three order determinant is to place plus sign, minus sign, plus sign. Don't ask me the proving for it. Just understand what I'm trying to do. Now, the plus sign, minus sign, plus sign. We pick this plus sign. One is possessing this plus sign. Y, the term, determinant of Y is written this way. This is plus one. I only wrote the plus for emphasis, but it's needless to write the four. Now, this plus one is on this row. This one, you see, is on this row, and it lies on this column. So we eliminate this row. We eliminate this column. What are we left with? We are left with minus 2, 0, 1, and 1. So we form this square line here. We put minus 2, minus 1, 0, and 1. Then we come here with our minus sign, minus. Then the number here is minus 4. We bring our line out again. This is the minus 4. It's on this column. So we eliminate here. Is on this row we eliminate here. So we are left with one, 3, 1, minus 1, and 1. So what do we have here is 3, 1, minus 1, and 1. Similarly, we move to the last one, which is what? Plus what? 0. It's on this column. We eliminate this column. We elim it's on this row. We eliminate this row. So we are left with what? 3, 1, minus 2, and what? 0. So we bring that out. 3, 1, minus 2, and 0. So as you can see, we brought out all we need to arrive at the determinant for 3 by 3 matrix. Then we begin to solve what you've known previously. This times this is minus 2. This times this is minus 0. Minus minus is plus 4. 3 times 1, 3. 1 times minus 1, minus 1. So minus 3 minus minus 1 become 3 plus 1. I would get a class plus 0. 3 times 0, 0. Th 1 times 2, minus 2. 
So this is minus 2. Mi minus, minus, minus 2 becomes what? Plus 2. So what do we have? 1 multiplied by minus 2 plus 4 multiplied by 4 plus 0 multiplied by 2. So this is minus 2 plus 8 plus what? Plus 0. <coughs> Sorry, this is 16. 4 times 4, 16. So minus 2 plus 16 plus 0 will give me plus 14. I need not write the plus, but I just wrote the plus for emphasis. So we have plus 14. And if you can see, that's exactly what we project on the screen. The process we followed. If you observe critically, we eliminate each by the process of eliminating the rows and the column and forming these boxes. You see, I don't want to speak the language of the terms not to create confusion, but understand the process, how to arrive at the determinant of uh, 3 by 3 matrix. I want you to, be, to, to, to record this process because by the time we get into matrix equation, equation system, of linear equation system, when we'll be solving inverse method, determinant method, we'll be using similar things like this to arrive at our solution. Then let's move to the next item we have. Having understood the concept of determinant, let's go to inverse of a matrix. Inverse of a matrix. If you look at inverse of 2 by 2 matrix, if you look at inverse of 2 by 2 matrix, first of all, find the determinant of the matrix and transpose the matrix and divide the matrix by a determinant. That is exactly what, I, what we do on the screen. The inverse of 2 by 2 matrix is direct. Merely focusing on how the formula on the screen and how we derive it can shed more light on your own. But let's go to the complex one, which is inverse of 3 by 3 matrix. The inverse of 3 by 3 matrix is made up of the following steps. Step number one, you are first of all to find out the central determinant. Find the determinant of the matrix. When you find the determinant of the matrix, two, you find what we call the cofactors, the minor. You find the minor. When you find the minor, the process of getting the minor is similar to what we've done here. When you are through with the minor, you proceed to the cofactor by introducing the alternate plus and minus sign. Once you are through with the, once you have introduced the plus and minus sign, you get the cofactor. Then you transpose. Remember, we we'll, we'll begin this session by learning transpose. By the time you transpose the cofactor, you have the adjoint. Now, when you have adjoint, you are at the last stage of getting to the inverse. All you need to do is to divide the adjoint by the determinant you got initially. Remember, we still find the determinant. And we have what we have there is matrix X. We say matrix X is equals to, and if you check what is on the screen here, what is on the board here, this is exactly what matrix X is. We say we should find the inverse of this matrix. So step number one, we solve for the determinant, which we had solved using our previous example, is still on the board. Our determinant is 14. So let's keep that somewhere. Our data is what? 14. Then the second stage is to proceed and get our minor. Our minor is derived in the following order. How do we derive our minor? Derivation of our minor is similar to how we derive the, the sub-element of this determinant. Let me show you something. To get the minor that will replace this, we cancel here, we cancel here. We have minus 2, minus 1, 1, and 0. To get the one that will replace here, we cancel here, we cancel here. We have 3, 1, minus 1, and 1. To get the one that will replace here, we replace here, we cancel the row, we cancel the column. We have 3, minus 2, 1, and 0. Remember, we've done this before. 3, minus 2, 1, and 0. Similarly, we now come here. We want to replace here. So we cancel this row. We cancel this column. Canceling here and canceling here. We are left with 4, 0, 0, 1. So we have minus 4, 0, 0, and 1. Similarly, this middle one, we cancel the row which it belongs we cancel here, we cancel here. We have 1, 0, 1, 1. 1, 0, 1, 1. In the same fashion, we come here. 
eliminate the row, eliminate the column. 4, 1, minus 4, 0. Sorry, 1, 1, minus 4, 0. We have 1, 1, minus 4, 0. Then also, we replace here. What do we use to replace here? How do we get its minor? Cancel the row which it belongs. Cancel the color. We have 4, 0, minus 2, 1. We have minus 4, minus 2, 0, minus 1. In the same vein, we want here. We cancel this row it belongs. We cancel this color. 1, 3, 0, minus 1. 1, 3, 0, minus Similarly, for the last one, it belongs here. We cancel the column. We cancel the row. 1, 3, minus 4, minus 2. We have 1, 3, minus 4, minus 2. With this, these are what we are going to use to get our minor as simple as possible. If we look at this critically, if we look at this critically, here, 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 minus 2, 0, 1, 1. If we look at this critically, this times this, minus 2, this times this, minus 0, this times this, minus 2, minus 2, minus 0. So the first one here is minus 2. This times this, 3. This times this, minus 1. Minus, minus 1, which is 3 plus 1. Here, we have 4. This times this, 0. This times this, this is 0. This times this, minus, minus 2, which is 0 plus 2. So we have 2. Are we together, class? Then also, if we proceed further, this times this is minus 4. This is 0. So we have minus 4. Minus 1. This is, this is 1. This is 0. 0. This is minus minus 4, which is 4. Minus minus. Plus 4. Minus 0. This is 4. 1. 0. This is 1. This 0 is gone. So we have 1 here. But we are doing the last one. Minus 1, 0. So this is minus 1, minus 2, minus minus 12. This minus 2 plus 12, that's likely going to be 10. So eventually, we have the following as our minor. We have the following as our minor. Now, the minor we have there, if you check what we have on the screen, is the same procedure we follow. 2 minus 2 minus 4. You can see 4. 4, 1 minus 1. 2, 4, 10. This is the minor. Now, the next step, which is step 3. Remember, this is step 1. This is step 2. To get the step 3, we introduce signs here. Plus, minus, Plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. We alternate the signs. Then eventually, if we multiply them by the signs, what we have here eventually will become the cofactors. The cofactors will become plus times minus. We still have two. Here is minus times this 4, we have minus 4, plus times this 2, we have 2. Similarly, minus, minus times this minus, we have plus 4, plus times this 1, we have 1, minus times this 4, we have minus 4, then plus times this 1, we have 4, minus minus, we have plus, minus plus, this is a minus plus, we have a minus. This is our cofactor. Cofactor is simply the operationalization of the signs. The operationalization of the signs. This will give us minus 10. 
this is uh, what do we have here? 10 plus this is plus so this is plus 10 this is minus so you can see eventually what we have on the board here is plus plus 2 here is minus 2 so you see what we have on the board by the time we operationalize the signs we have the cofactors the cofactors simply the minor with alternative signs multiplication then from the cofactors we move to get the trunk to get the adjoint to get the word adjoint and the adjoint is equals to transpose of the cofactor equals to transpose of the word cofactor remember transpose we started with so pick the row strengthen it turn it to column minus 2 minus 4 2 4 1 4 4 1 minus 4 remember row will become column then this row also will become column 4 1 10 so this is the cofactor this is the adjoint adjoint is simply the transpose of the word the cofactor if you observe critically here right from here we did we determine the determinant first which i've cleaned then we get all the minors by eliminating rows column then we introduce the plus and minus sign alternatively on the minor we have the cofactor then we transpose each of the rows into column you can see two minus four two into column we transpose the second row into the second column the third row into the third column that gets the cofactors then finally we add the word inverse how do we get inverse to get inverse which is uh, x raised to power minus one we divide everything here by our central determinant that i say we should hide which is 14. so this is minus 2 over 14. this is 4 over 14. 4 over 14 minus 4 over 14 1 over 14 14 2 over 14 minus 4 over 14 10 over 14 so what do we have eventually we have what we have on the screen as our inverse if you check what we have on the screen it's not different from what we have here we divide everything over 14 which is our central determinant so let's recap this in order for it not to be complex let's recap it we are giving this as the matrix x to find the inverse the first thing first we find central determinant if you see what is projected on the screen you are being told that our determinant is plus 14 we say see example 10 let's see let's go to example 10 and see how they, they, they derive the determinant remember this is our example 10 we derive the determinant this is the same matrix with the time we determine it to be 14 so that's here where we got the 14 then the second step is to find the minors how do we get the minor by eliminating each rows and column which eventually we have the minor matrix which we have at the down part of what is projected to you on the screen if you look for that by multiplying them by plus minus plus minus signs we have we have what we have here by multiplying them by, by plus minus plus minus sign then we have the cofactors how do we get the cofactor we place alternative plus minus plus minus sign on it then we have a new brand matrix called the cofactor now this the penultimate which is the second to the last step we call it the adjoint how do we get the adjoint we simply transpose the cofactor to become adjoint pick the first row straight strengthen it to become column just the way we did here these are the cofactor the first row is meant to be column the second row is turned to the second column the fourth row is turned to the fourth column then lastly since we know that inverse is equals to adjoint over determinant and this is our adjoint so we divide it by the determinant which we have here which is a minus 14 to divide every element there that gives us the inverse of the matrix then finally we go to matrix six terms of linear equations 
there are two methods of solving metric system of linear equation. We have the inverse method, which we have almost gone 80% of the solution here because we'll be using the same mat the matrix, the same equations that have the same coefficient as of this matrix to, a to ease our understanding. Then we have the second method, which we call the determinant method, or the one we call the Kramer's rule. Kramer's rule is another name for determinant method. Let's first of all look at the inverse method. If you look at the equation that is given to us there, the first equation there, the coefficient of x, y, z is brought out as the matrix. Then x, y, z is brought out as the second matrix to multiply it. Then the third matrix represents the constant inequality, which is 1, minus 1, and 7. That is why we see matrix A, x, B. Now, in the example we have, which is example 13, solve the following equations using inverse method and Kramer's rule. Let's begin by looking at the first inverse method. If you look at x there, the first coefficient of x there is 1. That's how we have 1 here. The second coefficient of the matrix is minus 4. You can see minus 4 here. The third coefficient of the last, the, the, the z there is not there. That's why we have 0. You can see the 3, minus 2, and 1. You can see 6. You can see, you can see 1, 0, then 1. That's how we got the matrix. Now, let me illustrate something for you on the board for you to understand me clearly. Now, assuming this is the matrix, it's being used to multiply x, y, z, which is equals to the last inequality sign at the constant, which is minus 1, 0, and what? 3. So in order to solve this, we bring out the main matrix. We bring it out first as projected on the screen. When we bring it out, we find the central determinant. We say, see example 5. And remember, the determinant has been solved to be 14. Remember the same matrix we are using, the central matrix, has been solved to be 14. We say, see previous example. Now, the next stage is to proceed to the inverse. Find the minor, which is exactly what we have done here. Find the cofactors, which is exactly what we've done here. Are we together, class? Then we say, find, after the cofactor, we say, find the adjoint. You transpose it to get the adjoint. Then find the inverse. Then we have the inverse. This is where we stop. The inverse that we have is what we are now going to use to multiply the constant of this matrix. All we need to do is multiply it by minus 1, 0, and 3. We multiply it all through, and that will give us the value of x and y. Multiplying this with this will result in what we have here. If you multiply and do all your addition, multiplication, subtraction, we're going to, we're going to get our x to be 1, our y to be 0 0.5 or minus, or what we call uh, 1 over 5, and our, our z will be 2. This is using inverse method. Understanding inverse of a matrix, as I told you, had taken you to 80% of it. If you look at what we've, do, what we've done previously here, we just resolve to the inverse stage here. When we resolve to the inverse stage, then we multiply it by the constant, which is 1, 0, and 3. Then we eventually, we operationalize as projected on the screen. Then we have x is equals to 1, y equals to 0 0.5, which is 1 over which is uh, 1 over 2, and we have z, which is equals to 2. If we are to use the second approach, which is the Kramer's rule, or the one we call the determinant method, all we do is very simple. Let me be brief and clear. We reproduce the main matrix here. When we reproduce the main matrix here, we have minus 1, 0. We have minus 1, 0. We are to reproduce the main matrix here. If we are to we have minus one, zero. That is in the previous matrix. We first of all find the central determinant in the previous matrix. In the previous matrix, we are meant to realize 
that what we have is 1, 3, 1. In the previous matrix, 1, 3, 1, minus 4, minus 2, 0. Then we have 0, minus 1, 1. This is the main matrix. So the first step is to find the determinant. So when we find the determinant, which is the same with the previous one we have done, which is equals to 14. Now, if the determinant is equals to 14, then we solve for x. When we are solving for x, when we are solving for x, all we need to do is we remember that this is x column, y column, and z column. So we replace this s column in the matrix with what? With the constant of the equation. So we pick the constant, which is minus 1, 0, and 3. Then we replace this matrix. We replace the x column. Then we have minus 4, minus 2, 0, 0, minus 1, and 1. Then we find the determinant of this new replaced matrix. When we get the determinant of the new replaced matrix, the determinant also is equals to, we call it delta x, which is equals to 14. If you operationalize it using the previous method we've learned. Then, if you now want to get the value of x, you simply say x equals to delta x all over ordinary delta. What is delta x? 14. What is ordinary delta? 14. So x is will give you 1, just as in our previous example using inverse rule. But assuming that we are proceeding further to get our y, if you look at what is projected uh, on the screen, that is how we derive our uh, x. But if we are to solve for y, all we need to do is to replace y column. Instead of first replacing x, no, we let the x be there. 1, 3, 1. This time around, we clean the y. We replace the y column. Y column with the what? With the same constant, which is minus 1, 0, and 3. Then we find the determinant. This time around, we call it delta y. And when we find the determinant, the determinant gives us 7, as you can see as projected on the board. Then if the determinant is 7, then we will now say y equals to delta y all over delta, which is equals to 7 over 14, which is 1 all over 2, or 0 0.5, as derived in our previous example. Are we together, class? Lastly, if we are to replace, if we are to find Z, we are simply going to leave the matrix intact first. You can see minus 2, minus 0. This is the original matrix. So we replace this X column. So we clean here. Replace it with what? The same constant of the equation, which is minus 1, 0, and 3. And we find the determinant. In this case, we call it delta what? Delta z. By the time we find delta z, as illustrated there, delta z will give you 28. Once you have 28 as delta z, then we will now replace this. We say z equals to delta z, which is 28 all over ordinary data, which is 14. And that gives us what? 2. So as you can see, the value of x and y and z are the same using inverse method and using Kramer's rule. Bearing in mind what we've done so far, you will realize that we've been able to learn the following. We've been able to understand the transpose of matrix the inverse of matrix. And remember, you cannot obtain the inverse of a matrix without obtaining the determinant first. Obtaining the minus, right? Obtaining the cofactor by introducing the alternate sign. Then, the transpose you learn, you transpose the cofactor to get the word adjoint. Then, divide the adjoint by the central determinant of matrix. Then, you have the inverse of a matrix. Then, lastly, where what we just finished is the applying matrix algebra to solve simultaneous equations. And there are two methods of doing that. We agree that we can use the determinant method, which is called the Kramer's rule, the one we just finished, and the inverse method, which is the first one we solve. Either of the way, I will advise you to go through the study guide again and pause the video 
for your own convenience in such a way that you understand the point that we are trying to drive at. On the backdrop of this, we've come to the end of matrix algebra. So in our next class, we'll be looking at study session three, which centers around coordinate geometry. Thank you and God bless. Thanks for joining us. Thank <laughs> you.